Congresswoman Jackie Speer has been an outspoken advocate for women's rights since her election in 2008. In 2011, she got personal on the House floor during a debate over funding for Planned Parenthood, saying she previously had had an abortion. That procedure that you just talked about was a procedure that I endured. I lost a baby. But for you to stand on this floor and to suggest, as you have, that somehow this is a procedure that is either welcomed or done cavalierly or done without any thought is preposterous. Speer first became known nationally as a congressional aide to California Congressman Leo Ryan in 1978 when they went to Guyana. They were investigating cult leader Jim Jones because of reports of abuse among hundreds of parishioners from his San Francisco congregation who had followed him there. When the congressman's team tried to go, taking people with him, members of Jones's team ambushed them on a jungle tarmac, killing the congressman and four others, including NBC correspondent Don Harris and NBC cameraman Bob Brown. Spear was shot five times and left for dead. Jones and his henchmen then got more than 900 of the cult members to drink poisoned Kool-Aid and die by suicide in the jungle. Spear eventually recovered after many surgeries, and in 2008, she won Congressman Ryan's old seat, inspired in part by the aftermath of her heroism during the Jonestown massacre. And joining me now is Democratic Congresswoman Jackie Spear, who announced last year she was not going to seek re-election. Congresswoman, we've talked over the years, as you know, I covered Jonestown mm -hmm. more than 40 years ago. What led you to the decision at the height of your power and seniority to decide not to run? You know, it was a hard decision, Andrea, but um, it's time to pass the torch to a new generation. And I have a husband at home who was tired of a weekend wife after 20 years. And it's time to go home, but I'm not losing my voice. And I intend to be very engaged locally and still uh, on a federal level when it comes to issues around abortion, gun violence, and our military men and women. So you were one of the first members of Congress to share your story about abortion and in response, obviously, to the debate and some of the things that were being said by the men uh, in that debate. How far along have we come? We, at, we're now after Dobbs and after all of these state laws. Um, we've, we've lost 50 years of yeah. rights for women in this country. And, but for the few states that allow it, I mean, we've got 26 states now that are basically prohibiting abortions. I mean, basically mandating by government that you carry a pregnancy to term. And when you realize that 57 percent of the women who have abortions are already mothers, it's because they want to take care of the children that they have. And they're oftentimes single parents. And in your case, there was a... a, a problem, fatal problem with the fetus. Right. The, the fetus had slipped through the cervix and then um, to the vagina. So it was, it was not survivable. But the way I was um, treated and the way they were referring to second trimester abortions on the floor by reading from a book that was full of nonsense was so offensive to me that I spoke up. Uh, you know, I can't even imagine also dealing with the post-traumatic stress and the physical problems from the initial, you know, tragedy that you experienced in the jungles of Guyana. You had years and years of recuperation. I did. I was in physical therapy for over five years. And, uh, you know, the body's a remarkable uh, you know, piece of equipment in that I was able to regenerate just naturally my radial nerve. Um, I still have, you know, two bullets that I carry with me and, you know, a very scarred body, but I'm alive and it was such a um, a powerful message of how short um, some of our lives are and how important it is to live every day as fully as possible. Uh, what about the emotional, the emotional em effects of that kind of, um, you know, the kind of violence you experienced and also the violence in Jonestown? So the emotional effect is real. And I think for all the survivors, there's, a, there's guilt um, for having survived. 
uh, survivor's guilt. There's also the, uh, every time there's a 21 gun salute, my body, you know, kind of reacts to that. Um, and it takes time to uh, recover. And there, there is a certain um, anxiety that you carry with you, but um, I've tried to turn that into a positive and become fearless in terms of addressing a lot of the legislative issues that I've dealt with. What accomplishments are you most proud of? Well, I would start with um, the issue of taking sexual assault and sexual harassment out of the chain of command in the military, um, dealing with the Me Too Congress Act, making members of Congress um, actually responsible and uh, for any sexual harassment they engage in and having to pay for it out of their own pockets. Um, pediatric cancer research, we've increased it from 1% of the NIH budget to 8%. Um, and. You know, Rosie the Riveter Congressional Gold Medal was another one that was kind of fun to get through. So a lot of issues around um, women, reproductive health. The one regret is not getting the uh, deadline in the ERA struck so that we could, in fact, have an amendment that says that you can't discriminate based on sex. You know, I was thinking the other day that I went to Houston for the women's conference as a local reporter based here. Uh, and we went down in 1977 mm -hmm. with the women's leaders, you know, Bella Abzig, Gloria Steinem, Shirley Chisholm, and three first ladies, mm -hmm. three first ladies, you know, including Rosalind Carter and Betty Ford. And the fact that it, they ran out of time with one state, Virginia, still left to ratify. And the deadline expired. And, that legislation never got passed. That's right. And now we do have 38 states that have actually ratified um, the Equal Rights Amendment. Right. And um, it's just striking that deadline, um, which is in the preamble of the amendment. 24 words. You know, and we're the only country with a written constitution that does not have an Equal Rights Amendment in it. And when you look at Congress now, is it in better shape than when you came? There are more women. There are more women. More, more people of color. That is true. I mean, there's more than double the number of women when I first got to Congress. So that's a very positive change. But um, it's gotten very toxic. And it's become a political push and pull. It, it, it is, in fact, a blood sport now, which um, has to end. And we've got to tone down the rhetoric because... Um, we've seen too much violence as a result of it. Social media, of course, being a big contributor to that. That's cool. and, and campaign money. That's right. If you are outrageous enough on social media, you can raise more money. It's a vicious cycle. Yes. Jackie Spear, thank you for your service. And I know it's not, gonna, it's, it's not ending. And wishing you all sorts of new adventures. Thank you. It's been lovely you know, having you across the table here. And we hope we see you again.